everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I have something in store for you that should hopefully help improve your sewing without ever actually having to sew that much. I know that doesn't really make sense, but what I wanted to do today was to sit here and go through five tips that I have to improve your hand sewing, whether you're a beginner, whether you're intermediate, whether you consider yourself advanced. These tips are things that I have learned over the years through my extensive years of hand sewing as a part of my job. With that, let's get into these five tips to improve your hand sewing without ever really having to sew anything. Kinda. Tip number one, shouldn't really come as a surprise to you, it's wear your thimble, guys. I've already done a video on how to use a metal thimble. I will put the link up above. Go ahead and watch that because I kind of cover everything about using a metal thimble that I think you should know. But basically, wear a thimble. Whether it's metal, where it's leather, I don't really genuinely care. I just really wanna encourage you all to wear a thimble. There are people who can hand sew without a thimble, absolutely. But for most of us, this makes a huge, huge difference. Your needle size and your needle type are actually very, very important when it comes to hand sewing. And it is something that most of us don't even consider when it comes to stitching. First things first, let me get my box of needles. Not all needles are made equally. In fact, most needles that are available today are crap. And that's just an unfortunate situation that we are in, in part due to the fact that most people don't hand sew. What needles should you use as a hand sewer? A lot of people I know, when they begin hand sewing or they do any hand sewing, they grab this. And it is the assorted needle pack by Dritz or whatever off-brand manufacturing. Or even worse, you get that circular plastic thing that has like just random assortment of needles in it. This is crap. These are garbage needles. And in fact, I was looking at the eyes of these needles and they are raggedy, jaggedy. They're not smooth. They are bent. They are malformed. They look like they'll give you tetanus. They're just crap, like they're absolute garbage. And so, but this is usually what's available anywhere you grab needles and you don't know what kind of needles you need. So what do you do? You grab, oh, 45 hand needles. This should work. No, they don't. Now it says here that it contains betweens, sharps, embroidery needle and tapestry needles. Like these are really bad. And I wanna show you how crappy they are. Let's just, let's just compare. This needle here is Dritz needle from just the multi-pack. You can see how not nice it is. Here is a Bowen needle from France. Slightly bigger eye, cause it's not the same size, but you can still see how smooth that is by comparison. How nice that is by comparison. And that's because this is a good needle. This is a bad needle. Look at that, look at those pieces of garbage, but this one, this one is a personal favorite. Who has an eye like that? Like, look at that. They didn't even try to clean that up. It is just, ugh, <laughs> like, what is this? This isn't a, this, what, 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 what is that? Like, that's just, that's just ridiculous. Here is a colonial needle. Just something to keep in mind there, kids. Quality matters with your needles. Ideally, you're gonna want English needles. English needles are traditionally the best needles. They are becoming increasingly more difficult to find. But if you can't get English needles, get Japanese needles like Clover. So the best brands to work with when it comes to sewing needles and what's available are going to be Colonial Needles. Colonial Needles also makes Roxanne needles. John James Needles. These were traditionally made in England and sometimes you can feel, still find John James needles that say made in England, but John James needles have changed how they manufacture their needles and it's not for the best. It says on the back of the packets now, assembled and inspected in England using needles made in China 
to in tacos quality and specification. Most of the needle is made in China, but then it's taken to England to kind of be finished and inspected. So it's not the worst, but they've definitely stopped producing the entire needle from start to finish in England. Basically what you're gonna wanna look for is a needle that's made in Europe. If they're made in Europe, they're gonna be pretty good. If they're made in Japan, they're gonna be pretty good. There's two main types of hand stitching needles. There is the sharp needle, which is kind of the basic dressmaker hand sewing needle. It's the most common hand sewing needle that's out there. And then there's also the between. The between is also known as the quilter's needle and it's a little bit shorter, it's a little bit fatter. The other type of needle that I actually suggest using comes from Nicole. It's what she prefers to hand sew with and that is an embroidery needle in the smaller sizes. So an embroidery needle that is say a size 8, 9, 10, 11, even 12, it's going to have a slightly longer, bigger eye than a between or a sharp wood. And it also is not as pointy on the eye section. So it's easier to handle if you don't have a thimble on. And you might find that you prefer to hand sew with embroidery needles. Nicole does. And I think it's a really great option and a really great idea. I prefer to sew with a size 10 sharp. Depending on what I'm working with, I might go up to a size nine sharp or I might go down to a size 11 sharp. The bigger the number, the smaller the needle, the finer the needle is. So I usually find a size 10 sharp is good for most sewing unless I'm working with wool and then I'll go up to like a nine or an eight sharp because it's a little thicker in diameter and a little bit stronger. Throw your needles away. I cannot tell you how many situations I've been in where hand sewing something and they're not big hand sewers and I ask for a needle and they pull out needles that are ancient and they're tarnished and they're bent and they're dull and they're no good anymore, but they won't get rid of them. They just keep trying to use them. It's just like a sewing machine. Whenever you have a problem with a sewing machine, one of the first things that people tell you to do is to change out your sewing needle. It's the same thing for hand sewing. I'm gonna be really honest with you guys. I am a thread snob. <laughs> I am very picky with the thread that I work with when I'm hand sewing. I always recommend sewing with a natural fiber thread. I do not hand sew with polyester at all, no. So when you look at antique garments that have been hand sewn, so things pre-sewing machine, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see thicker, stronger threads used for seams while finer, thinner threads are going to be used for hemming and finishing work. So when you're hand sewing a garment, you do not use the same weight of thread for every part of the garment. Most of my hand sewing projects, I prefer to work with sewing silk twist. And silk is also not created equally. Let me explain. All right, we have here three different types of silk and th three different weights. The pull test, number one. Guterman's. Easy. Number two, 50 weight Kinkame thread, 100% silk. Finally, 30 weight. <laughs> Ow. Definitely the strongest. The way that these silk threads are created are not the same. Guterman silk, it's made out of silk, but frankly, it doesn't feel any different than a polyester thread. It's a little bit rough, it's a little bit coarse. There's friction against my fingers when I, when I rub my hands over the thread. I just, it's not smooth. And frankly, it's not very strong either. When you take the 30 weight Kinkame thread, this is smooth, it's soft, it feels good to the touch. It doesn't have the friction, it doesn't have the scratchiness to it. And that's something to keep in mind. When you're hand sewing a seam, you want this stuff to be strong. It needs to hold up to wear and tear. So the way that you do that is you use stronger, thicker threads. So here's the deal with cotton thread. Cotton is just not a very strong fiber to begin with. And the way that they make cotton thread is just, it's just not that good. 
like to get my linen thread from Burnley and Trowbridge and they have different weights and different types. I really like working with linen thread, especially if I'm sewing on something made out of linen. And the older you go, the more common linen thread is, especially compared to cotton. Now, when you sew with linen, you need to use beeswax with it because this is super duper rough. It is bumpy, it is slubby. Again, that has to do with how linen is treated nowadays. Unfortunately, it's not treated with the respect it deserves. Well, I'm going to demonstrate to you in slow motion. my technique for hand sewing. What I really want to stress to you all is to be conscientious of your technique. Think about how you're hand sewing. Is this the most efficient way to do it? How do your stitches look? Do they look like historic stitches that we see in the garments here? Or do they look gappy? Are they loose? How big are they? How small are they? What do they look like on the outside? Do they have pretty slants to them? Is the thread overexposed? Do you use usually catch your stitching by hand? Is it usually messy? Is it uneven? All of that actually goes down to technique because if you have a good technique, that's how you can develop speed. That's how you can develop precision, pacing, and all of that. So your technique is extremely important. All right, so you see that the cut line of my fabric is closest to my body. And just FYI, there is obviously a camera on a little tripod between me and the fabric. So this is slightly awkward to be perfectly honest with you guys. <laughs> Part that I'm sewing is closest to me. The rest of the fabric is away from me on the table. So if you're working on a gown or something, it's laid out nice and smooth and flat. It's not bunched up in your lap. I hold the fabric like so, and then I use my ring finger and my thumb to fold the fabric. Sometimes I will also do my index and my thumb, but usually I end up holding it like this to keep tension, folding it with my thumb and bracing it with the ring finger. You can see I have my size 10 sharp pushed between my thumb and my index finger. And then my middle finger actually kind of anchors it and helps control it and keep it very stable. You can see like, it's not wibbly. It's very stable between my hands. I'm gonna guide the needle up and down to baste because we like to baste. Push with my thimble, pull. And do you see how I hold it like so? And then my pinky comes here and then I pull the pinky away. Now, obviously that's out of the shot, but we'll do a full shot so you can see the whole movement. But my pinky acts as my tension. And so I'm going this way with my stitching. And what that is gonna result in is a pretty well hidden stitch. Do you see what's happened here? Do you see how the threads are not really visible from this side? And they're nice and small on this side too. They could be better, but like I said, I'm sewing between a tripod right now. So it's a little, a little awkward I'm trying to keep it in frame for you guys. And the final tip, baste. No, don't argue with me, baste. Put the pins away and baste. I cannot tell you how many times I had to look at interns and go, what are you doing? Now do that. And I did it too. Totally that person who was like, I don't wanna baste, that takes up too much time. I'm gonna go so fast because I don't have patience for this. And I'm here to tell you guys, hard lesson learned for me and I'm just gonna teach it to you easy. It's so much faster to baste your fabric, especially if you're hemming. It is not faster to pin it. I promise you, I have raced people. And you can make sure that you're keeping everything on the straight of grain and your basting will hold that into place. It'll be nice and even. You won't have like bits, you know, where they're like gap in the fabric's like, no, I wanna be free. And the pin's like, yeah, I'm trying to hold on. Or like the pin falls out. The pins are on top of each other. It just gets in the way. The second thing is actually speed. We've all done it. I've done it. You start sewing, pff, caught in the needle. Ugh, undo it. Stitch get caught in the needle. Ugh. You finally get away from one pin and then you get going, you start to get a rhythm, oh, caught again. You can't get a rhythm. 
And if you can't get a rhythm, you can't get speed. And if you can't get a rhythm, you can't get precision And because you have to start over again. When your stitches get really good, it's when you have a rhythm and you can just kind of sit there and start autopiloting and just start sewing and sewing and sewing. But if you're always getting your thread caught on pin heads, you can't get a rhythm and then it doesn't look good. And if you can't get a rhythm, you can't develop your technique. And if you can't develop your technique, we already started about that. It looks like hard garbage. And if you can't get a good rhythm, then you can't get speed. So ultimately, basting helps you improve your technique, it helps improve your rhythm, it helps improve your speed, and it helps improve your quality of your sewing. If you want your sewing to look good by hand, you gotta baste it. Just bite the bullet. All right, everyone, that is it for my five tips to improve your hand sewing before really hand sewing anything, kind of sorta. Of. Anyways, I hope that you all had fun. I hope that you all learned something today. I hope that I've given you something to kind of chew on and nosh on and, cont and to contemplate when it comes to your hand sewing. So I hope that my five tips have helped you out. Let me know in the comments below which tip you thought was the most like mind blowing. I hope that you all have an amazing rest of your week. I will see you all here next Sunday with another video. And with that, it's time to go play with the dogs. I'll see you all next time. Bye. This is the part where I need to get my notes. Oh God, that's just so, ugh. Like, just look at that. Like, ugh, gross. I don't remember what I was talking about, but I think it was cotton threads. Mercerized, mercenized cotton. Oh, Abby, trust me, okay? So, costume Auntie Abby says, baste your fabric.